Okay, so we have linear inequalities here. You all have probably seen many of these before. In fact, I think we have talked about these before, so let's just go and refresh them. First thing to note is that when the sign is facing this way, you would read it as greater than. And we always read left to right. Now, if, if it is facing the other way, again, because you all, always read left to right, this would be read as less than. Now, of course, if you have an equal to sign below it, it would be greater than or equal to. And of course, if you had an e a, a line underneath it, that would be less than or equal to, okay? So these are the items that will drive our initial discussion here. Now, first and foremost, let's look at our first our problem here and decide if it's a greater than or less than scenario. Is it greater than or less than? Well, clearly it's a greater than scenario. Now, furthermore, is it greater than or equal to? Well, because it has a line underneath it, it's clearly greater than or equal to. Now, now that we can read it as x is greater than or equal to four, we now can come over here and identify some of the graphs that cannot be answered. Greater than, if you go greater than, that means you're moving, that means your graph goes to the right, okay? If it's less than, that means your line on your graph goes to the left. So because we read that as greater than, that means that B and D are completely out of the question in terms of options. Agree? Okay. Now, which one is it? A or C? Because both of them are going to the right. They're both indicating greater than. Well, when you have just the inequality symbol with no equal to underneath it, you're going to use an open circle at the end point. However, if you're, you have an equal to, then you're going to use a closed circle at the end point. What is ours? It's an equal to, meaning that C is not an option. A is the correct answer. A is the correct answer because we are greater than 4 to the right of it and equal to 4 as well, closed up circle. Any questions about that at all? Does that make sense? Questions? Okay, let's move on to the next one. Now, sometimes you'll have a double-sided inequality. A double-sided inequality means that you actually have a closed up boundary. You have boundaries on both ends and upper and lower limit. So what this is saying is that you have some kind of closed off one end point, another end point. In other words, you don't have an arrow going one way or the other, meaning that A and D are completely out of the question in terms of answers. You guys with me so far? A and D are not options because those are representative of greater than or less than scenarios. But that's not what we have here. We have a closed boundary from 0 to 16. 0 to 16, a little bit past 15. Now the question is, closed circle, open circle, combination? Well, what, is, what are both of these? They're both equal to's. And we have learned that equal to's include the end point. So B is not an option. C has to be the correct one. Make sense? So the rules of closed and open circles apply even when you're doing uh, a double-sided inequality. What doesn't apply is these going one way or the other. Double-sided inequalities give you a cutoff on both ends, whereas single-sided inequalities start at one and go to the other. Okay, so hopefully that helps you. All right, now let's go answer this next one. So we've got x minus 6 is greater than or equal to negative 8. 
Now, how would I solve this? I treat it just like a regular equation. I would add six to both sides, and so x is greater than or equal to negative two. And that's it, okay? Again, how did I solve that? I solved it just like anything I've done before. Okay, uh, put it on the wrong side. That's okay, it doesn't really matter. Bottom line is that you treat it just like as if that was an equal sign there. You know what to do, we just did it. Now the question is, how do we graph x is greater than or equal to negative two? Using what we just learned five minutes ago. X is greater than or equal to negative two. This is a less than, no. This is a less than, no. Both B and C are greater than. Greater than or equal to means B is the correct answer, not C, because we learned that the equal to part closes up the circle. Make sense? Are you guys getting the right answer? Somebody want me to do theirs? Any questions about that? Can I move forward? Okay, all right, next. All right, let's keep on solving these, shall we? All right, so I've got 3x plus 2 greater than or equal to 2x plus 7. If that was just an equal sign in between them, would it be easy to solve? Yes, it would, and it still is. We're going to subtract 2x from both sides like we normally would. 3x minus 2x is just x plus 2 greater than or equal to 7. Just carry that inequality sign like you would in a normal problem from a day, a day ago. Then we'll subtract 2 from both sides like we normally would, and x is greater than or equal to 5. Does this look almost identical to the work we've done before? Yes. Is it easier than some of the work we've done before? Absolutely. So now you would just type it in the way that you see it. X is greater than, greater than or equal to 5. And now, of course, they'll ask us for a graph. And my work is kind of off in the way, but there's x is greater than or equal to 5. Which ones do we not use? B and C right here, because these are less than. Is it A or D? Well, it should be A, right? Why should it be A? Because it's greater than or equal to, right? Greater than or equal to. Are there any questions about that at all? If you know how to read your key, you practice it, it's going to be no problem. The algebra is actually easier than some of the stuff we've done before. All right, let's go do another one. Okay, so I'm going to just breeze through this because the reality is that you guys know how to do this. The only difference is that there's an inequality sign separating these the left side from the right side, which is no different, not much different than what we've done before. Is that true? Yeah. Can you do it? Absolutely. So what I've got there is x is less than negative 4. Okay, and now we need to select the correct graph. I hope you guys are ahead of me. I hope you're doing great with the algebra. If you're not, you need to ask and have me do your problem. Because I, I, I think that if I can just help you, you, won't, you can almost get through this entire homework right now. All right, ready? It can't be A or D. Because A or D are greater than scenarios. It has to be B or C because it's a less than, less than scenario. So it's got to be one of these two. Now the question is, is it B or C? Well, we learned that when there's an equal to sign, we close up the circle. So if we see an equal to sign here, we'll use this one, but we don't. C is the correct answer. C is the correct answer because it says x is less than negative 4. It says nothing about x is less than or equal to negative 4. Make sense? All right, and now for a very important skill. 
So I'm gonna come over here and um, put this skill here because it is a fundamental skill that is the only thing that differentiates what happens when you're dealing with inequalities if there's some special case. Now follow along because this is pretty much the only thing that could trip you up if you're doing these problems. Okay, I've got negative 4t is greater than 12. We know under normal circumstances, we would be dividing by negative four. Under normal circumstances, we would divide both sides by negative four, and you'd be absolutely correct. Under normal circumstances, that would become t negative three. But when you're dealing with inequalities and you need to pay close attention, unless you know it already, if you divide by a negative, if you divide by a negative, when you and if you divide, divide, not add or subtract, divide by a negative, you need to flip the inequality sign, meaning that this greater than becomes a less than. And that's all, that's the only little trick that you have to know for this section, is in the event that you divide by a negative, when you're dealing with inequalities, then what you need to make sure you do is that the sign has to change direction, okay? That sign must change direction. Now, unfortunately, my work is kind of in the way here, but you can clearly, um, on your problem, know what you need to do. Mine is a less than, so it's gotta be probably A. Why is it not B? It's really hard to see behind there, but see how A is going left, less than, open circle, corresponds with just a less than, not less than or equal to. Make sense? Did you guys get yours correct? If you didn't, you gotta let me know because I've got a little bit of work that's crowding up being able to see it, but I don't wanna erase my, my rule right here. Are we okay? Did you get yours correct? Okay. All right, let's take a look at this next one. I've got negative 0.04x is less than or equal to 0.16. Now, this brings in what we learned from last class. Last class, we learned that if we have decimals, we can move the decimal place enough to make everything whole. Or we need to move the decimal place for everybody enough so that we don't have any more decimals. Well, I have two places here and two places here. If I move everybody over by two, that will make my life significantly easier. And we learned that in our last class. The last lesson was shortcutting when you have decimals, how to handle them. Now, simply divide both sides by negative four. And so X is going to have some relationship to negative four. Is that relationship gonna be greater than or equal to or less than or equal to? Well. I hope you learned from the previous problem that when you divide by a negative, as you can see here, that you're gonna change the direction of the sign. So there it is. We have divided by a negative once again, and so we must change the direction of the inequality sign, okay? And so, of course, that would go the other way with a closed circle. So as you can see here, greater than, closed circle equal to. Anybody have any questions about their problem? Anything at all? Want me to do yours? Want me to help you out with yours? Please ask. So I've got 6x plus 5 plus x greater than or equal to 4 plus 4x minus 8. Now, you're going to treat this problem just like any of the ones we've done before in previous classes. Let's combine like terms. 6x and x make 7x plus 5. 
4 and negative 8 make a negative 4, and I've got 4x. It doesn't matter what order you put them in so long as your signs are correct. This is not anything new. If it is new for you, go back to the previous sections, practice it a little bit more. It wasn't on a previous test, so I would assume that you guys should have a pretty good handle of it. 7x minus 4x is 3x plus 5 is greater than negative 4. Then I need to subtract 5 from both sides. And so 3x is greater than negative 9. Divide both sides by 3. And so x is greater than negative 3. Now, is this, any of this work, anything new? No, it is not. It's stuff you've done before. What is new? The inequality. Why did we not flip anything here? Why did the inequality sign not flip? Well, because we didn't divide by a negative. We added some subtracted, but we did not divide by a negative. And so therefore, there's absolutely no reason for you to flip the inequality sign. So you just gotta be careful with that, pay attention. And of course, greater than negative three, nope, not that one. Greater than negative three would be C. Very hard to see, but it's, it's uh, this one right here. Greater than negative three, open circle. Do you guys see that? Hard to see. I'm gonna go, I'll go ahead and erase this because you guys know the rule, I've practiced it enough times. So, there it is. And I'm actually gonna erase this now too because we've had enough practice. So there it is. X is greater than negative three, greater than to the right, negative three down here, open circle, greater than, not equal to. Any questions about that at all? You guys doing okay? Want me to do your problem? Okay. All right, let's take a look at number nine, shall we? So, I don't even know where the graphs are gonna show up. I'm just gonna assume that it goes straight down. So how about I do mine over here? So I've got negative b plus five plus six b less than or equal to negative three plus two b plus eight. All right, here we go. Negative b plus 6b, combined like terms, is 5b plus 5. Less than or equal to negative 3 and 8. That's going to be 2b plus 5. Again, stuff you've done before. Nothing that you haven't done. It's all stuff that you know how to do. I'm going to just move through this fairly quickly because you know how to handle it. So this one happens to end up at zero. So B is less than or equal to zero. And then we need to find a graph that connects with that. Less than or equal to zero, that would be this one. Okay. Oh, less than or equal to. Not paying attention. Close the circle. So there's the work. All the stuff again, review. We've done this many, many, many times. Only difference, the inequality sign. And how does that come into play? The graph. All right, questions about yours? Want me to do your problem? Want me to do a problem? Okay, number 10. So this is actually a little bit tricky. It does bring us back to the things that we, we did last class about clearing fractions. And so let's take a look at this. I've got one third P plus two greater than or equal to three six P minus two. Okay. So what did we do last class when we saw fractions? Step number one, get the LCD. You need to know what your denominators are. I've got a denominator of 
3 and a denominator of 6. What would be the LCD for that? Not 18, but 6. Hopefully you understand that the LCD would be 6. Don't just go ahead and multiply them together. That's not always the right way to do it. So now what do we do with that 6? We're going to multiply that by the first fraction, and we'll multiply that by the other one. And what that's going to do for us, like we learned in a previous class, is that's going to clear the fractions. Get rid of the fractions. Let's take a look. 3 and 6 are both divisible by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 6 divided by 3 is 2. When all this is multiplied, 2 over 1 times 1 over 1, you're left with just 2 times p plus 2. Okay? Now we'll go do it with the other side. 6 over 1 times 3 over 6. Both of these 6's are divisible by 6. And so, of course, they essentially cancel each other out. They're both divisible by 6. 1 over 1 times 3 over 1 is just 3. And now, I have enough information to finish the problem. Let's go do that. Open up parentheses. 2 times p is 2p. 2 times 2 is positive 4. Two, positive 2 times positive 2 is positive 4. 3 times p is 3p. 3 times negative 2, negative 6. Again, from here down, all stuff you know how to do. Let's keep going. Subtract 3p from both sides. 2p minus 3p, negative p. Plus 4, greater than or equal to, negative 6. Subtract 4. Negative p, greater than or equal to, negative 10. I'm almost done, but I'm not quite there yet. Hopefully you can get down to this step. You need to pay close attention. If you're ahead of me, that's great. But if you're, if you're with me, follow along. That's a negative sign, isn't it? We're going to have to divide by negative 1. And this is a indicator that we're going to have to flip that inequality sign. Otherwise, we will get the wrong answer. And there it is. If you can do this problem, you have a great handle on what is going on in this section. So my answer is P is less than or equal to 10. And of course, we're going to need to graph that, and that should be the last one. <clears throat> now, is there anybody that has a question about this process? Let me know. I hope you got yours right. No, let me know. Happy to do your problem. Ready to move on? Okay. Let's go to 11. Uh, I'll just work it up here. That way we don't potentially run into anything and still can see the problem. So I've got 46 minus 2x plus 1 less than or equal to 3x plus 5 plus x. I am happy to do a problem like this over a problem like this. Um, and so let's go open things up. 46 minus 2x minus 1 less than or equal to 3x plus 15 plus x. How did I get that? Distributed all of our signs and coefficients. Then let's combine my terms. Negative 2x plus 45. How did I get that? 46 minus 1 is positive 45. Nothing happened with the negative 2x. Other side, 3x and x make 4x plus 15. OK. 
Okay. Subtract 4x from both sides because I'm moving all the variables to the left. Negative 6x plus 45 is less than or equal to 15. Subtract 45 from both sides. And negative 6x is less than or equal to negative 30. Divide by negative 6. And that is a indicator that we have to do something here. And x is greater than or equal to 5. Now, I move through that really very, very quickly. But frankly, it is stuff that we've done before. Um, is it difficult? Yes, it is. Can you do it? Have you done it? Yes, you have. So, um, and so uh, there's the right answer. All right. There's a pretty, that's another complete problem. Both the previous problem right here with fractions that you had to clear out and this one that I just finished, they test everything in this section. If you can do both of these problems, you have a great understanding of what's going on in this section. It does everything from fractions to all the algebra skills to that one special skill of flipping the inequality sign if you divide by a negative, to graphing, knowing how to graph properly with open, closed circles, less than, greater than. Questions about that at all? Need more time on your problem? So don't worry about number 12, 13, 14, or 15. That's enough. I just want to teach you the inequality stuff. That's it. So you're done with that.